The chairman, my ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to give a talk on the relevance of microRNA as biomarkers in adrenocortical cancer. First of all, I would like to thank, uh, summarize the general features of microRNA that are mediators of RNA interference and mostly involved in the regulation of gene expression. They are 19 to 25 nucleotide long single ribonucleic acid molecules in their mature form that arise during a multi-step maturation process. There are about 2,500 or more than 2,500 microRNAs known in humans at present, and their genes are mostly found in non-coding regions like introns or non-protein coding genomic regions that were previously called as junk DNA. The classical action of microRNAs is the inhibition of messenger RNA translation or inducing that degradation by binding to the three comma untranslated region of messenger RNAs. But there are novel data that beside these classical cytoplasmic actions of microRNA, they also have nuclear actions affecting gene transcription and high stones. So their activity seems to be much broader than previously uh, established. About 30 to 60% of human genes are uh, predicted to be subject to microRNA-based regulation. And a very characteristic feature of microRNAs is their pleiotropic action. That means that a single microRNA can have many different messenger RNA targets. Moreover, a single messenger RNA can be targeted by various uh, microRNAs that often act in a synergistic fashion. A very important aspect is that tissue specificity that relates also to their expression, uh, the expression of microRNAs is different in tissues. Moreover, their action is also tissue specific, and regarding our topic today, the relevance of microRNAs in adrenocortical cancer, the oncogenic or tumor suppressor roles of microRNAs is also tissue dependent. A microRNA can be oncogenic in one tissue and tumor suppressor in another. The expression of microRNAs is different in various diseases, and most notably tumors, that gives rise to their pathogenic relevance. And another very important as aspect that I would like to focus on in this presentation is the secretion of microRNA, as they are present in body fluids and may constitute a form of a novel approach that is called liquid biopsy, that would be a minimally invasive diagnostic procedure, and by analyzing secreted microRNAs, we get information on malignancy prognosis that would be of great clinical significance. MicroRNAs are very stable in body fluids, but also in formally fixed samples. That, gives, that is important as they are very useful biomarkers, uh, markers of malignancy or prognostic markers in tumors. And from a histological point of view, they might be especially helpful for tumors whose histological analysis is difficult, such as differentiated thyroid tumors and also adrenal tumors. They might be used as in tumor classification and subclassification and might also involve or, uh, therapeutic targets. Following the classical uh, tumor suppressor oncogenic dichotomy, microRNAs can also be classified in this fashion as underexpressed microRNAs can be the tumor suppressor overexpressed as oncogenic that target messenger RNAs involved in cell cycle activation, proliferation, invasion, or apoptosis that are all important in tumor development. First, I would like to briefly deal with the relevance of tissue microRNAs in adrenocortical tumors that can be helpful in the histological diagnosis uh, or uh, determining malignancy or prognosis, but certainly mostly not in a preoperative fashion as adrenal biopsy is very rarely performed. In our first study, that was one of the first in tissue microRNA expression, we have found 22 microRNAs that are significantly differentially expressed between malignant and benign adrenal tumors. And by real-time PCR, we have validated three, six. Three of these were highly overexpressed in ACC. These are oncogenic, and three were underexpressed. These are tumor suppressor. I would like to highlight the MER503 that will be later dealt with, and the MER210. The MER210 is a general hypoxamere that is overexpressed in under hypoxic conditions in many tumors. 
Uh, as the histological diagnosis of malignancy in adrenocortical cancer is difficult, by uh, performing a rock analysis, the difference between 5.11 and 5.03 turned out to be the best with high sensitivity and specificity for ACC and adrenocortical adenoma differentiation, but it was only on a small cohort of ACC samples. But the microRNA involved, the microRNA 503, was later found to be a prognostic marker where the overexpression of MER 503 was associated with poorer survival in relation to tumors showing only a lower expression of MER 503. And very similarly, in a recent study, the overexpression of the hypoxemia MERV 210 was also associated with shorter overall survival in ACC patients, that the hypoxia is also a general feature of advanced adrenocortical cancer. By a bioinformatic analysis, we have shown that these microRNAs mostly affect the G2M cell cycle checkpoint. It is not very surprising in a malignant tumor. In another early study, a very similar number of microRNAs were found to be differentially expressed, 23 as in our study, but only two in these two studies were the same. Uh, that shows the problems in the analysis. But we have to highlight two microRNAs from this Australian study, the overexpressed MER483, because that is the most consistently overexpressed microRNA in adrenocortical cancer. And it is very important that its gene is located in the second intron of the insulin-like growth factor 2 gene. The overexpression of the IGF2 gene is one of the most general features of adrenocortical cancer. Overexpressed mer 483 p has a very high positive predictive value. And then other microRNAs should be highlighted, the underexpression of MER-195, that is the most consistently underexpressed microRNA in adrenocortical cancer. Very little is known on the pathogenic relevance of overexpressed MER-483 in adrenocortical cancer. In this study, one of these targets was validated to be the PUMA, the P53 upregulated modulator of apoptosis, and as we have heard in the first talks today, the P53 uh, appears to be a major player in adrenocortical cancer. Most advanced ACC have mutations if P53 beside the uh, mentioned familial cancer syndromes. Uh, as MER483 is located within an intron of the IGF-2, it is not surprising that there is a strong correlation between IGF-2 and MER483 5P. As a demonstration, how uh, archived formal and fixed samples can be used for diagnosis. This is another study that has shown that other set of microRNAs overexpressed, but we also see here the MER503. And the two most significantly overexpressed microRNAs were the MER675 and the 335. In another recent study, these microRNAs that were previously shown to be overexpressed, like the MER483, 210, were also confirmed. MER195 was underexpressed. But uh, in a small subset of other non classical histological types of adrenocortical cancer, such as myxoid and oncocytic variants, the expression of these microRNAs were different, showing that this might be another feature. Overall, microRNAs are considered to be relatively early players in tumor genesis. MicroRNA dysregulation is considered to be an early event. And I'd like to now refer to the study of our co-chair, Guillaume Assier, published in Nature Genetics, that is the first and only study to date using next-generation sequencing in adrenocortical tumors. And uh, besides analyzing several other important molecular features, the microRNAs were also studied, and three clusters were established that parallel the other molecular features. Here also the MER483 5P overexpression was noted, but as a novel finding, the overexpressed cluster of 506 515 microRNAs were noted. That is a novel finding that has to be confirmed, but this shows that there must be other microRNAs important in adrenocortical tumors as well. Altogether, uh, there are relatively few microRNAs highlighted in blue that have been confirmed in at least two independent studies and validated. Uh, 
as there is a poster of our group showing that there are great differences between the platforms used, that uh, this warrants uh, larger scale studies on unified platforms uh, that may have the hope that we have find a generally characteristic feature of biomarkers for tissue uh, adenocortical cancer markers. A very short uh, presentation, I would like to include the relevance of network analysis in microRNA studies. Networks, biological networks, are mostly scale-independent networks, and such scale-independent networks are the internet or the air traffic of the world. And if we see these hubs, the airports that are connected by many flights, the more important a hub is, the more connections it has. If we lose an important hub, such as the Heathrow or the Atlanta, the whole air traffic would collapse. And this, this is the same is true for the gene expression network. And if we constitute the gene expression network of the ACC with microRNAs, the underexpressed microRNA 195 seems to be a major hub that is interconnected with many other genes, and the MER483 seems to be a top regulator that might seem to affect the whole gene expression network. I have to also mention the study of the previous pres uh, of the author of the previous presentation, Mabruka Dogman and Enzo Lali, where in microRNA expression in childhood adrenal tumors, the underexpression of MER99A and 100 were noted. And these have targets as the insulin-like growth factor 2 receptor, IGF-1 receptor, and mTOR signaling. This mTOR has a very efficient drug, the, the Everolimus, and in vitro and Xenograph studies showed that these suppressed ACC proliferation, that might be a promising uh, medication. However, in the clinical setting, Everolimus doesn't seem to be that, that effective in adrenocortical cancer, showing that these in vitro and xenograft models not always parallel the human clinical setting. And now, I would like to turn to the most uh, novel aspect of microRNAs that are the blood-borne circulating microRNAs, as microRNAs were shown not only to be present in tissues, but they are present in the body fluids, in the blood, and other bloody fluids as well. These can be uh, released via passive release, due necrosis and inflammation, but also via active release in membrane vesicles, exosomes or microvesicles, or in macromolecular complexes with organote or high-density lipoprotein. Membrane vesicular and HDL-associated microRNA were, no, were shown to enter other cells, and thereby circulating microRNAs might act as hormones, conveying epigenetic gene expression information to other tissues. That would be a very intriguing mode of action. There are many data that tumor cells secrete microRNAs, and there are several hypotheses and also experimental data that these secreted microRNAs affect both normal and tumor cells and are involved in the normal cell tumor and intratumoral communication, immunity angiogenesis, and tumor invasion formation might also be affected by these secreted microRNAs. But from our point of view, these are most important that can be exploited as biomarkers, as minimally invasive biomarkers. And as we don't have good markers that can be used for the malign uh, establishing malignancy for adrenocortical tumors, it is very difficult to establish malignancy in small and to exclude malignancy in large adrenocortical adrenal tumors. These might be helpful. Uh, in the first study, uh, the uh, MER 34A, MER 483-5P were overexpressed. MER 195 was underexpressed in malignant tumors. These, and this will be important later, as the reference gene is a major question in plasma circulating microRNA studies. The MER 16 was used, that is a relatively abundant circulating microRNA. Uh, these two microRNAs, the 34A and 483-5P, considered, were considered by the authors to be promising biomarkers. In a later, in a subsequent study, uh, it, the MER overexpressed MER 483-5P and underexpressed MER 195 were studied not 
in ACC as a group alone, but also in subdivided groups with non-aggressive and aggressive forms of adrenocortical cancer. And it seems that these can be predictive of recurrence risk. Moreover, uh, the uh, underexpressed MER 195 seems to have a quite good sensitivity and specificity value for differentiating benign and malignant adrenal tumors, whereas the overexpressed MER 483 showed high sensitivity and specificity for differentiating non aggressive versus aggressive adrenocortical cancer. We have heard from uh, yesterday's uh, pr plenary lecture that this can be an exploitation of genomic studies. These two microRNAs were also shown to correlate with ACC tumor stage. As with more advanced tumors, microRNA 195 was lower and uh, 483.5p expression was higher. This study I used the cell MIR-39, and this will be, I will discuss the problems with the micro -RNA, circulating microRNA studies uh, in, with relevance to our study that we were first tried to establish the microRNA profile in the plasma of adenocortical tumor patients, but that was completely unsuccessful. Very low number of microRNAs have come out and we couldn't validate these. We, uh, we suppose that due to the very low amount of circulating microRNAs, microRNA is not uh, the most useful way of studying circulating microRNA expression. We have therefore selected eight microRNAs based on literature data and tried to validate these by real-time PCR. Uh, by using the reference gene cell MER39, we have found one overexpressed microRNA, the MER181b. The cell MER39 is a spike in control that is a CNRHAP, that is elegance gene that is added by, uh, at the time of RNA ECL isolation and is a control of the efficiency of RNA isolation. But if we use the MER16, that is a relatively abundant and stable microRNA in the blood, we have five, four more microRNAs that are significantly overexpressed in adrenocortical tumors, 100, 185, and the general hypoxemia, 210, and 483.5p. Certainly, I cannot say that because with MER16 there are more microRNAs significantly overexpressed that it should be better than cell MER39, but this shows that the choice of reference gene is very important in establishing the results. By rock analysis, these two combinations of microRNAs showed the highest sensitivity and specificity, but these are not high enough at present for introduction to clinical practice. But we suppose that by sample size extension, these might turn out as promising biomarkers. What are the problems with circulating microRNA studies? The most significant problem is associated with a very low quantity of circulating microRNA. Uh, that is related to the choice of analysis, and we think that microarray is not very good versus real-time PCR. Uh, it must be added that next-generation sequencing might be a useful alternative. What should be the reference gene? Cell MIR-39 is an artificial control, so it doesn't have anything to do with the biological reference. It is only a control of our technical procedures. MER16 is widely used, that is a relatively abundant microRNA, but we have also shown in some studies that this level of microRNA16 might also change. The third we have tested, RNU6b, was completely unsuitable. Another major question is whether to use plasma or serum because the circulating microRNA profile is not the same in the two. Certainly the coagulation process and the activation of platelets will greatly modify the microRNA expression profile. Uh, to, uh, to highlight another possible applicability of uh, circulating microRNAs, uh, we have shown in in vitro and in a pilot xenograft study that 9-cis retinoic acid might be an efficient uh, or a potentially useful uh, treatment option for adrenocortical cancer. And in a, now uh, high, uh, we performed a large-scale xenograft study that has been presented in guided poster 29004 yesterday. 
that the circulating MER483-5P in the blood of xenografted mice with H295 cells seem to react to the treatment and with 9-cis retinoic acid and the combined treatment with 9-cis retinoic acid and mitotain, the expression of MER483-5P was lower so these circulating microRNAs might also be exploited to monitor treatment efficacy to follow for the follow-up of patients, and that might also be a useful uh, applicability of these circulating microRNA. Uh, we have seen that there are several hypotheses regarding the potential uh, relevance of circulating microRNAs in tumors, mostly related to tumor progression, but circulating microRNAs are also found in healthy individuals. And uh, when I saw that why is exactly MER16 the most abundant microRNA in the circulation of one of the most abundant microRNAs, MER16 is known to be the prototypic tumor suppressor microRNA that was first described in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And if we look at the circulating microRNA expression profiles in healthy individuals, we can see several microRNAs that are predominantly tumor suppressor, like the MER 451, 223, LAT7 microRNAs, MER 16. Altogether, there seems to be a relative uh, predominance of tumor suppressor microRNAs in the circulation of healthy individuals. Certainly, as microRNAs can have dual action, we cannot tell that there are only uh, tumor suppressor microRNAs. The action of tumor suppressors is tissue specific, and there are also predominantly oncogenic microRNAs in the circulation. However, we have established the hypothesis that the circulating microRNAs having tumor suppressor activity might uh, constitute a tumor surveillance mechanism that could be analogous to the immune cancer surveillance. And these microRNAs entering transforming cells, cells on the verge of transformation by halting cell proliferation, inducing cell cycle arrest or apoptosis, might contribute to uh, an anti-tumor efficacy that might complement immune cancer surveillance. Certainly, that is only a high hypothesis, and it would be relatively difficult to test. In conclusion, what are the future trends in, in microRNA research? They are promising biomarkers both in tissue and blood. In the blood, as minimally invasive biomarkers and as a major part of a liquid biopsy. There are several technical problems associated with circulating microRNA markers regarding the choice of analysis, the housekeeping gene, et cetera. It must be unified to uh, have a uh, well useful biomarker, larger scale microRNA studies with sample size extension and unified methodology could be proposed. The next generation sequencing is a very promising alternative in microRNA studies as well. But we must view these molecular alterations in an integrative fashion regarding messenger RNA, transcription of tone profiling, CGH, methylation, uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, transcription factors, and other bioinformatic approaches like proteomics and metabolomics, uh, genomics and epigenomics. And personally, I think that the best marker would be a combination of these different molecular alterations and not single molecular alter alterations. And as these microRNAs seem to be very important in tumor genesis, uh, these might also constitute novel therapeutic targets uh, and for molecular intervention, uh, many more in vitro and in vivo studies should be performed. Altogether, the microRNAs that are most promising in the study of adrenocortical tumors are the MER483, MER195, 503, and the 210, the general hypoxemia. Last, I would like to thank all the people who have contributed to this study from the second department of medicine, department of genetic cell and immunobiology, and the first department of pathology. And last, but most, the PhD students who have performed the brunt of the studies presented. Thank you for your kind attention.